my man Rep Butler. What is the good word, sir? Hey, yo. Hey, my yo. God, man. Last time we talked, we said that we heard Errol Spence and Terrence Crawford were going to finally bang, bang, boogie. And guess what, folks? It is legitimately happening July 29th, Las Vegas, Nevada. I'm going to say up on game broke that, man, because we let them know early that it was coming real soon, man, hot and heavy. Yeah. You know what it is. Yeah, I like that. I like that right there. Hey, I mean, how big – because, I mean, when 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 Tank and Garcia was, was set, they're like, okay, hands down, this has the potential to be the fight of the year. It was certainly an amazing showcase and a crowning moment for Tank. Uh, what does this – I mean, this says – I mean, this is almost like level of Canelo and, and Floyd – when they fought, I mean, how does how what's the comparison here? Is this easily the fight of the year coming into it? This is absolutely fight of the year. This is a true 50-50 fight. And for those who don't understand what that means, it means everybody's equally matched. Listen, Terrence Crawford is here for his respect. Errol Spence is here to let you know that he believes he's the best. And for Terrence, more than anybody, he feels overlooked. He feels like everybody sleeps on him. Everybody says he's never fought anybody. He's small in the welterweight division in comparison to Errol Spence. So this is a great, great, great fight. And, yes, it is on the same level, if not bigger, in my opinion, than Floyd Canelo, only because Floyd, to many, still were considered a little um, older veteran, so to speak, even though we know he, he was not, and he schooled Canelo. But that's the energy people gave that fight, and Canelo was just expected to either mop up Floyd or show his flaws, and that didn't happen. In this fight, you have two guys that are equally matched, and we're talking about skill with Terrence Crawford, even though he would say he's powerful, and power with Errol Spence, who many think have that one-punch knockout ability. So I think this is a great fight, Bar. I mean, this is the fight for this generation, um, to be quite honest. It's not, even, it's not only fight of the year, it's generational, straight up. It's like Hearns and, and Sugar Ray type it, deal. Absolutely, it, and that's a great alliteration because I actually look – at My bad, TJ. Terrence Crawford as Marvin Hagler. He's, oh, okay. he's an underdog. He comes from a scrappy city. And Errol Spence is 100% looking more like the Sugar Ray in the, in the situation. He's flashier. He has a lot, bit, a lot more hype. He sold out AT&T Stadium in Dallas a few times. So it's really like the hype guy versus the underdog, but both are equally matched skill-wise. This is going to be an amazing fight. Yeah, skill-wise, when you say uh, Sugar Ray and Tommy Hearn, that 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 was the fight, Sugar Ray and Tommy Hearn. Even though, if I'm not mistaken, Sugar Ray had already lost to Roberto Duran, but he avenged it. This fight is different because not only are Spence and Crawford top of the pound for pound list, they're both undefeated. And so, when like I'm a huge boxing fan, I can think of maybe a handful of fights that were in that situation: De La Hoya and Trinidad, both at the top of the pound for pound list, both undefeated. People don't recall this one, Roy Jones and James Tony. Mm. They were both at the top pound for pound list, and they were both undefeated. And then it was one more. It was uh oh Andre Ward and Kovalev. They were both mm. at the top pound for pound list, and they were both undefeated. And then the one where is that to the, me is that the fight where Kovalev like was when he dropped out, when he, he dropped him. Yeah, yeah. But okay, this, go ahead, this, go ahead. this fight I'm about to say. It was his coming out party, at least for me, because everybody thought Diego Corrales was a killer. May he rest in peace. Is Floyd Mayweather and Diego Corrales mm. when they fought at lightweight came came with the cigarette in the and mouth. So he had that, now that cancer stick in his mouth. You on get his way Spence to, and Crawford. They're both pound for pound rated. They're both undefeated. A true fifty fifty fight. Did I miss anybody um, along where you can say, man? Like you said earlier, it's a true 50-50 fight. Both are pound for pound. Both are undefeated. We haven't seen – this is the fight of the decade because you can't even say Mayweather, Canelo. Canelo wasn't pound for pound when he fought Mayweather. Many thought Mayweather would win, and he did. This fight truly is two all-time great fighters, and the fighter that wins this will undoubtedly be considered an all-time great. And so – did I miss a fight along the way? That, this is the question. Did I miss a fight along the way that I didn't name that compares to this? 
No, I don't think you did. I think you named all the top ones, especially when you're talking about the, under, the battle of undefeateds. Um, I would say in terms of skill matchup, even though, again, we're talking about you know one having more fights than the other, I would say De La Hoya and Mayweather had the same level of expectation and anticipation, huh. mainly because a lot of people thought that De La Hoya was actually going to do his thing against Mayweather, and Mayweather really showed a master class, which is what took him into the money made with the world right after that fight, you know? So I think, and, and, and you could even, honestly, you could even say Zab Judah and Floyd Mayweather on some level, huh. because the anticipation, again, at their age level they were at, that was like one of these two are going to become a superstar after this fight. And that's what we have here, right? These two guys. Y'all want to throw Sweet at, P in that? Sweet P in De La Hoya? Yeah, you know what? That's I didn't think about that one. That actually makes sense too. That does make sense. All right, go ahead. Let's go. Let's that go. Make sense. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, you know, this is a yeah, box of four. Yeah. Right? Come yeah. on, yeah. rest yeah. easy, sweet the, pea. Yeah, look at the people that we're comparing. Yeah, these man, these guys. is the greats. I mean, that is a huge honor, first and foremost. And I'm gonna be honest, the person that I think obviously has the most to gain is Terrence Crawford, and that's a dangerous proposition for Errol Spence. Mm. Because what we know about Terrence Crawford is he's very, very much has an ego. He very, very much feels like an underdog at all times, and he's very capable hey, Red, of disproving all doubt. You, 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 you pro Crawford. I hear it. Uh-oh. I hear it. Uh-oh, is he pro Crawford? We, I you know, hear we, it. We ain't, the, we ain't get the prediction yet, but I will say that there's more intangibles than just a good boxing resume and acumen. Hmm. Who do you uh, think I, is the better boxer? Whew. You know, I can't say Errol Spence because Errol Spence has never been undisputed. See, See this, is, this is the thing, Red, though. That's Wolford. a discredit because Spence is a fundamentally sound boxer that fights aggressively on the front foot instead of off the back foot. He's just an mm-hmm. aggressive, fundamentally sound boxer. And it's crazy because Crawford has found a way lately. He just always adjusts and lands his money punch. Like yeah. Crawford is dropping guys more at 147 than he was at 135. That sounds like uh, the bronze bomber. Before he met, uh, well, he even got Tyson Fury with it. it. But, I mean, he's a much more fundamentally sound boxer but it's than, like than what the Broncos. Crawford is like a computer, and he's just kind of figuring yes, you out exactly. during the course of the it fight. Sounds and like Javante, too. Bow! And you're That's on your exactly back. like Javante. Yeah. Now, now no, Spence I mean, I mean say, to answer your question directly, yes. I think, well, I'm going to go ahead and say, I think they're both equally matched in terms of boxing skills, fundamentals. But I have to say, to TJ's point, the downloading of information, again, it just makes Crawford a very unique fighter. And like Andre Ward said, the goal of any fighter, if you're trying to be a legend, is to chase belts in multiple weight classes. Charles Crawford's already been undisputed in a weight class. Now he's chasing undisputed against Errol Spence. Whoever wins this fight has all the belts. That's something Floyd Mayweather never even did in his hey, career. Hey, Red, how, how – we, we haven't seen this. How is Crawford going to – deal with the aggression of Spence attacking the body, throwing 60 to 80 punches around, or will his footwork and just his overall boxing ability negate a lot of what Spence wants to do? That's a great question. I'm going to say this. I think there's two examples to look at. One, you got to look at the way Crawford fought Sean Porter. And then second, you got to look at the way Javante Davis fought Ryan Garcia. And why do I say that? Well, Ryan Garcia, where he played himself, because he was doing good in the early rounds, was he was too aggressive. So it gave Javante the ability to realize his sloppiness and also because of the height. Yeah, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think Spence would like that comparison. you comparing him to uh, Ryan. <laughs> well, I have like to say that. that only because I think that Spence is going to try to get um, Terrence up out of there. And I think Terrence is going to do what he always does. Is he's very patient. The reason, one of the reasons why people don't really watch Terrence Crawford fights when he's not fighting a big name, like uh, Errol Spence, is because he's traditionally boring to most fight fans. It's a cumulative effect. Tank, come, Tank does the same thing, but he comes in with more hype value. Terrence doesn't come in with any hype value. He's from a non-traditional market in Omaha, Nebraska. He doesn't wear a lot of jewelry and chains. He's not doing a lot in pop culture. So at the end of the day, he's a scientist. You have to watch him round for round and then see his greatness in the later rounds. Spence, on the other hand, is going to come in there and do what he does best, get up close and personal and try to beat him down. But that's what Sean Porter tried to do, too. And Sean Porter's output is the same as Errol Spence. And Sean but he, he, he's not fundamentally as sound as a boxer, at no, least no, no, no. Not, not to at me all. as uh, Spence is. Not at all. But look at Spence versus Gar- or Danny Garcia. It was a close fight. They were toe-to-toe. 
And well, I think that Spence is going to do that here. Do you think the layoff will aff- affect Spence? Spence hasn't fought in a while. You think that layoff may bother him? I don't think so. I think that this is the fight that's going to make both of these guys' careers, and I don't think there's going to be any excuses. Look at, and to your point, look at Ryan Garcia. Now it's the excuse factory, right? Everything he's saying now is about he was drained, the, you know, the water rehydration. Everything was, is, and now is about the excuses. His team was disloyal. I don't think Spence is going to come in here with any of that. He's a thorough guy. We already know he comes in here to play. But at the same time, again, I think – Errol Spence has to realize, if you go toe-to-toe with Terrence Crawford, he's going to slip a little quicker, and I think he's going to download the info just a little faster. I just think he's a one half a step more sharp than Errol Spence. All right, here's my money question. Rhett, you ready for this one? Absolutely. It's a money question now. Okay. As long as it ain't my money, we good money. Do we go trilogy? Is this, is this, is this the Ooh. run back? Is it two? Is it three? How much bigger does it get? Is it Canelo Alvarez to the to the winner? Where does it go for the winner? I think it goes at least two. Um, in terms of three, I'm going to tell you why I do not think that. I think it goes at least two, obviously, if one of these guys wins two in a row. Because, again, and I'm going to say this only because Crawford, at, to me at this point, is the one with everything to gain. I think Crawford, he's already said he's going to 154 after Errol Spence to take on one of the Charlos. So, I mean, at the end of the oh, day, like, you're, you're a, talking uh, about a guy right. that already has a succession plan in terms of getting belts and multiple weight classes and showing you that little guys can go higher and higher the same way Floyd did. So, again, I, don't, I think it goes two. Unless it becomes a, a one-in-one fight, then obviously it goes trilogy. But I think this is one of those fights where, honestly, it might do the Triple G, Canelo. But I don't know, man. I don't know. This, this, this we is get a good fight, we're going to get another one. That, I just want a good fight. That's all I want to see. What if somebody get, get put to sure. sleep in the first round? No. That ain't happening. No. Just say for the sake of saying, one of them gets put straight to sleep. Good night. Goodbye. Right. So long, say la vie in the first round. Do you want to see a rematch? Does it seem does, does it seem fluky? Is it better if if something splash knockout happens versus a hard fought fight and and the guy and the guy wins the fight? I mean, it, I'm okay with I'm okay with a flash knockout because at the end of the day, look, it is what it is. If somebody gets one off like that, anything can happen in the course of a fight, even in seconds. Mike Tyson showed that. So it is what it is. That wouldn't that wouldn't make me negate somebody's um, abilities in the second match if you just got caught. So I would definitely want to see a second fight. Hmm. There was never a rematch. Caught. There was never a rematch between Buster Douglas and Michael. I mean, why, no. why did that not happen? Politics, Don King, Mike Tyson had a lot going on. He, you know, he claims he had a physical illness at that time. You know, I mean, there was a lot going on during that, but it was really Don King politics. Legal issues. It was a lot. And remember, that was in Tokyo. It was yeah, a lot it was going. in Tokyo. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. yeah. That was, was just a that was off, that was a sidebar off off topic. But okay, what does this mean? Uh, do you have any more, uh, TJ? Yeah, no, I mean, no, no. Got... I'm good. I'm good. I, I can't. I mean, I love boxing, as you know, but yeah. I can't wait. That, I can't wait for the fight. I'll, I'll ask one more, and then we'll let you out of here. What What does this? You know. Everybody says when the heavyweights are are going, it's it's phenomenal for the the boxing game. It it brings a lot of attention. But there was a time period where the smaller guys ran boxing, and that was that Sugar Ray era with all of those with Hagler and Hearns and all of them. How does this compare? And what type of impact are all of these? Because I didn't even think about the Charlos, and then you just had uh, Buddy last weekend when when what he won, uh, w- which was very controversial. It was last weekend, the weekend before. Who am I? Oh, you're talking about well, Roly? Uh, who who's my man? We you came on to talk about the fight. I'm just blanking on his name right now. Uh, he he fought. Uh, man, it's a big fight. I mean, he won won the title, and then Shakur was up in there saying, "I'm the guy." He's saying, "I'm the guy." Oh, you know. Devin, Devin Haney, 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 and Haney. Lomachenko. Okay, right. Which a lot of people thought that Lamachinko won that that fight, by the way. But anyway, I mean, that was a big fight. There are a lot of big fights seemingly taking place. How does this compare in in the grand scheme of making boxing relevant and seem relevant in 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 all the sports? 
Var, that's a great question, and it's extremely important. You know, boxing had lost some momentum in relation to the UFC, which is a juggernaut. It took a lot of people to get used to MMA, but once they got used to it, the personality sold the sport, right? Conor McGregor, Ronda Rousey, Israel Adesanya. Boxing lost a step because of the past. We know that people wanted that, you know, guys fighting each other at the right time, energy, also promoters being a little greedy, being a little nefarious, lost people's trust in the game. Now with fights like this, which keep the little guys in the forefront. You know, and salute to Floyd Mayweather for being one of the main guys, along with Pacquiao and others, to keep little guys in the forefront. These guys are showing you that this generation is willing to fight each other now, not wait four, five, six, seven years when they feel like this is the downslide and they might get a guy when he's on the way out the door. No, they're going to fight now, prime time, when we know this is when we're supposed to see it. And boxing needs that trust and reassurance for the end consumer. So salute to Errol Spence. Salute to Terrence Crawford. You're all welcome. Boxing's back. Stop hating on the game, baby. There it is. That's Rhett Butler, a pretty left hook. Let's get let's get him a round of applause. I tell you what, boy. That hey, Rhett, yo. but man, Rhett be crushing that. Crushing. Crushed. Yeah, so anything you want in the fight game, make sure you go check out our man Rep Butler. Pretty left hook. It's on up on Game Presents.